Now, to continue the case for the opposition, it brings me great pleasure to invite onto the stage historian, um, historian Count Nikolai Toystoy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm not sure that I'm very well equipped to talk about celebrities because I don't recognize the names of any of the people who've been mentioned. <laughs> uh, a celebrity for me would be, uh, well, it's a long time ago, I suppose in the year of the coronation, Donald Pierce singing By a Babbling Brook. I could sing it, but I'm sure you couldn't, and you wouldn't want me to either. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, I think all this talk about celebrities is um, ephemeral, like the celebrities. You won't hear, you'll never hear of them again, and they'll, they'll get old and ugly and have their lips puffed out, and uh, they're not hardly worth talking about. Well, I'm carried back to the days of my youth when I, in the year of the coronation, I went to do my first um, three months uh, service as a private soldier. And uh, like everyone at that age, I was 18, I had fallen desperately in love with a French, beautiful French film star, Anne Vernon, whom I'd seen in a film with David Niven. And I found a lovely colored photo of her in an um, illustrated magazine. So in my tin um, uh, uh, cupboard, which we had behind our beds, inside the um, door, I'd posted up Anne Vernon. Well, round came the lieutenant, who never said anything, and Corporal Martin, who was very formidable, got the military medal in Malaya. And he said, uh, Tolstoy, why is your cupboard shut? Open it. So I opened it, and there he saw Anne Vernon. She was very beautiful. He said, you know, you're not, in the British Army, you're not allowed pin-ups. Take it down. So I had to. But then I went to see, I was at... Um, Hyde Park Corner when I watched the coronation and there was our queen. Well, she wasn't just our queen, she was so beautiful that I forgot all about Anne Vernon and fell <laughs> passionately and devotedly in love with the queen. And of course it wasn't difficult to find a nice photo of her. So that went inside the door of my tin cupboard. <laughs> Next day round came the young officer and Corporal Martin. Corporal Martin saw the door shut. He said, Open that door, Tosto. And he looked, and he, he saw the picture of his commander-in-chief. He looked at me and he said, Tolstoy, you're bloody cunning. <laughs> but I wasn't cunning at all, I was, I was just in love. Uh, and I honestly think that the whole talk about celebrity culture is, is so ephemeral, it's, it's not worth even thinking about. It also seems to um, forget the fact that there have been celebrities before now. Uh, in fact, the very reason we don't know is because we've forgotten them. Um, the Victorian age had its celebrities. It wasn't Lord Roberts, it was the great McDermott or Lily Langtree. And uh, before that, it was uh, Nell Gwynne. And uh, it, so it goes all the way back through history. Celebrities come and go, and frankly, they don't matter one bit. Yes? If we've, if we've forgotten them, what, how do you name them? Then? Well, I remember them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? If, if everyone's forgotten them, if, celebrity, if being a celebrity is simply something that disappears, how do we have documentation? How do we have people who've written biographies? Well, if you take the trouble, you can find out about them, of course. Uh, or if, if, like me, you're interested in them, you will remember them. But most, most people won't. And they won't remember the awful people we have now. And uh, the thought of having one of these celebrities, or anyone <coughs> except the hereditary monarch, as our head of state is um, quite horrifying. Who, for example, here, unless they're a citizen of that country, has the faintest idea who is the president of Germany or the president of Italy or the president of Austria? They are entirely hopeless figures. They're not even celebrities, though they should be. I mean, what's the point of a president unless he represents the whole country and is known to do so? But if he's some shuffling chap in a grey suit uh, who comes forward whenever there's an occasion, and even the people being introduced to him don't know who he is. <laughs> Why not have a monarch who not only does everyone know who the queen is because of her magnificent qualities, which we've heard justly extolled, and her history, but the history of the whole British monarchy. I don't know who the president of Germany is, I confess straight away, and I don't want to know. I don't care <laughs> at all. Uh, 
but I do know, I can't even picture him, nor can you, I fear. But I can picture King Charles II. I can picture Henry VIII. I can picture King Harold at Hastings. I even played his part in a reenactment of the battle. Uh, but luckily I didn't get an arrow through my eye. Uh, the, 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 the monarchy represents the whole history of this country in a wonderful way because it's a magical way. Some people read a lot of history, others have a rather peculiar idea of it from what they watch on television, but all have some view of it. And our monarchy personifies the whole of that history. No celebrity could ever do that. Anyway, they won't be celebrities. You can't remember who Donald Pierce was. I barely remember. And we none of us know. I don't know who this um, Dwayne is at all. And, uh, I, don't want, I don't want to know. What good can he ever do me? But the, the Queen does an enormous amount for all of us. And she represents this country, as was pointed out by our earlier speaker. Uh, the great thing, as Walter Badgett pointed out in the 1865, I think, is that it is the power that she and the monarchy denies to the politicians, which is one of its greatest virtues. And we can see that with the succession of um, appalling prime ministers we've had. Uh, the last three, whom um, a man in a backstairs lavatory wouldn't employ, yes. Do you not think that there are a lot of people who actually have a lot more about the book than Who care about... Sorry, do, do, I couldn't quite catch that. Who care about Wayne? A lot more about Wayne. Oh, well, uh, good, good luck to them. I bet. <laughs> I, I frankly doubt it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I have a horrible feeling there are many people just as ignorant as me. No, the, the, everyone knows who the Queen is. Everyone is honoured to meet the Queen. The Queen lives. We don't want her to lead an arduous life, but in fact she does. Uh, we don't, uh, normal people don't actually believe the press when it says that Prince William's tour was an utter disaster. It was in the Sour Grapes group, um, but re re what I, from everything I read, it was perfectly clear that the majority of people like her and the people who wish to replace her are the sort of dubious characters who've um, coined in everything that gets you up to be at the top in um, um, uh, society and um, uh, we don't like the idea of the Queen but in a way this confirms what is so good about the monarchy that it keeps these awful people out of office and um, having to at least go through the motions of showing respect. Now I'm sure when Boris Johnson goes to see the Queen when he goes through all the long halls and soldiers and the yeomen of the guard and so on He's quite overawed and humble, too, when he sees the Queen. When he gets out, he probably says something perhaps cheeky and daring to his obsequious aides. But nevertheless, it's had a powerful effect. He can't say that openly. He can't show any disrespect openly. Uh, and the monarchy does represent a very long, hugely long history. A book I'm just finishing at the moment is about how the monarchies of Britain were restored in the beginning of the 5th century after the uh, collapse of the Roman Empire in the West. And it goes right back to all those, those days when monarchs were regarded as gods, uh, or as uh, semi-gods. And um, the divine right of kings, which is falsely taught to be, mean that the kings can do no wrong, it wasn't that at all. It was that they were answerable to God. And I believe the Queen thinks that too. The grand ceremony, that's why I'm strongly in favor of having a grandiose monarchy, which actually doesn't, in effect, doesn't cost us anything because of, as was pointed out earlier, the huge, if one is concerned with pounds, shillings and pence, uh, by tourism and other um, acquisitions for, uh, in respect of the monarchy. And, uh, but not only that, of course, uh, we don't just think about how much it costs to have the monarchy. I don't even know. Uh, the point is that the mo uh, we, don't know the, 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 we have an army, we have a police force. We need these. They're expensive. But if the constitution, as run by the, uh, the, uh, with a queen and a monarchy, is effective, and it's very effective, particularly in these very particularly divisive times when people, as is rightly said, people don't have respect for authority, <coughs> then all the more important it is, in fact, it's vital, because we know, and as I know from my family history, uh, you might guess that I'm Russian by blood, 
uh, that w what happens when this respect goes and when people then suddenly all start uh, woke, become woke and, and everyone knows everything before being taught about it. So I think, I, I hope that you will reject the idea that we, um, uh, I've forgotten the motion, but I think it's that we, um, need, that we need show business people in charge. Well, I think that the further away they keep, the better.